full in, Lord, what it means, Father, what it means for us, Lord, so that we can go out there and make an impact. Glory to your name. Bless him, Lord Jesus. Lord, you know his heart. You know his desire, Lord. But Father, only you can meet with him, Father. But we thank you for his life. Thank you for his health, Lord. Thank you for providing for him and his family, Lord. We give you praise and honor, even as he will minister the word, Father, as he will teach us. Lord Jesus, it's a word that will never return void. It's a word, Father, that will fall on good ground. Good ground tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All the glory to Jesus. We thank God. We give him all the praises. You know, without him, we're nothing. The Bible says in him, we live, we move, and we have our beings. So all the glory goes to him. Amen. He is our father. If he's, without him, we wouldn't be here today. Without him, we wouldn't be able to even understand scriptures. You know, Jesus Christ says that the Holy Spirit will come and guide us into all truth. So he's the revealer of the truth. Amen. So tonight we can all depend on the Holy Spirit to minister to us through the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, tonight. As you brought us here again this evening to look into your word. Thank you, Father God, that um, we thank you for what you what you would do this evening in our lives. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week we began in the book of Revelation and we began to look at chapter 1 of Revelation and we began to see how John was a man that was dedicated to the things of God. I spoke last week that God reveals his secret to those who are dedicated to him. That these people, this revelation came to them as they were living for the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And John found himself in the Isle of Patmos because he was persecuted for the word of God. Amen. How many people would dare to be persecuted for the word of God today? People are ashamed of the gospel. People are ashamed to tell people about who they um, ashamed to tell people who they actually worship who their God is, they can't really express their faith. Some people are scared of losing their job. <laughs> Some people are scared of not offending. They, they don't want to offend people. Amen. Obviously, I'm not saying you go and start causing trouble at work. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> amen. Just use wisdom, amen. God will bring those people to you. They will ask you, then you can tell them because they asked you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Just use wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And let your life, let your life speak. Amen. Many people are praying for people like Brother James say, oh, please, Lord, let them encounter the love of God. You might be the answer to that prayer. It might just be you, your love towards them they have to encounter for them to actually see Christ in you and come to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So John was was he was um, exiled into the Isle of Patmos because of the word of God. And last week as we began to talk, we talked about being king and priest um, to God because Jesus Christ has made us king and priest. Hallelujah. And I went ahead to describe some of our role as priests unto God. Amen. I know maybe when we get to chapter 5 of Revelation, we're going to talk more on that. I don't want to go in deep into it now. Amen. I want us to, and I want us to um, just get um, this um, Daniel's dream sorted out. Amen. So we now went over to look at the timeline at which John was when he actually received this revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the timeline is important for us. So we can know how close we are to the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So we went into Daniel chapter 2. Amen. 
Hallelujah. John Daniel chapter 2. And we looked at how Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, um, he had a dream. And he began to tell these people that, hey, guys, you need to tell me my dream. And they said, you t- I mean, tell us, tell me, you need to tell me the interpretation of my dream. And he said, you tell us the dream, we'll give you an interpretation. And he said, no, 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 you've got to find out the dream, and you have to find out the interpretation. And he says, if you don't, all you guys that call yourself the men of wisdom in this nation of Babylon, you will be executed. Amen. And he appointed um, one of his main men, Ariok, to go and gather them and kill them. But, you know, Daniel was taken on exile by the Babylonians when they invaded Jerusalem. They took people on exile. They took them as prisoners of war, and Daniel was one of them. And they took Daniel in as one of those men of wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Daniel was a man that prayed the Lord, and he had an excellent spirit. Amen. He was in tune with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said, Okay, instead of killing all these people, give me time. Let me go and pray to the Lord, and God will answer my prayer. He would give me the dream and the interpretation. Amen? So let's go into our Bibles, Daniel chapter 2. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to read from, we're going to read the interpretation of the dream. And I want us to pay attention to that interpretation. We read it. We Then it says here, this is where it's supposed to be interpreting the dream. is in verses 11. It says, You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. Hallelujah. Brother um, Deacon James, please, can you put the image up for us? Amen. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image, the great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome this image's head was of fine gold amen fine gold praise the lord jesus christ notice those words fine gold its chest and arms of silver of silver of silver amen and its belly and thigh of bronze amen its legs of iron so we've got gold uh huh. I want to know whether you're following. You have what? What? Gold. Yeah. Bronze and iron. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It says its leg was what? Iron. Its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watch while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floor. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now we will tell you the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And and wherever the children of men dwell, or the beast of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hands and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours. Then another, a kingdom third, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be of, shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces 
and shatters everything and like iron that crushes that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others whereas you saw the feet and the toe partly of potter's clay and partly of iron the kingdom shall be divided yet the strength of the iron shall be in it just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay and in the days of these kings the god of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Hallelujah. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrated before Daniel, and commanded that they should, they should prevent, present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, since you should reveal this secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also, Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. May the Lord bless his reading in Jesus' name. Amen. What an interesting story. Amen. What an interesting story. So, Daniel was able to interpret a dream that he never knew about. He interpreted this dream. And he told the king the meaning of the dream. Hallelujah. So that image, we look at that image from the dream. Hallelujah. One of the things he said to King Nebuchadnezzar is that he said King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar which is the king of Babylon, the, Babylon, the Babylonian king was an empire. You will notice that any kingdom that has any, thank you very much, any kingdom that has any thing to do with Israel, it means that they are part of God's plan for the nation of Israel. Amen? So, Daniel had this dream, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. And God was showing what was going to happen in the future. And it concerned the people of Israel. It's important we know that this actually, this dream, was something to do with the children of Israel. And I will explain later. So it says King Nebuchadnezzar, at that time he had the dream. So they were on the top of that image. They were on the head of that image. As at the time, Daniel was um, interpreting the dream. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm coming. Let me just get my own image up because I can't really see that one from where I am here. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. There you go. So, as at that time, and that was from 600 BC. Amen. So, that was that time when Daniel was interpreting that dream. Then he said, after this kingdom that we are in now, he said, Daniel was saying, that God is saying that there's another kingdom that will come after you. 
And that kingdom is the Medo-Persian Empire, which is, which is the kingdom. We will, if we read throughout the book of Daniel, we will see actually this empire come through. Because even in the time of Daniel, Daniel had experienced these empires. So we've got Nebuchadnezzar. We've got the king of Babylon. Then he says another nation will come after that. Another empire will come after that, which is the Middle Persian Empire. Then after that, we would have the Grecian Empire. Amen? The Grecian Empire. How many of us remember Alexander the Great? Did he conquer the world? Even history tells us about all these empires. If we go and read history, we'll find out about this empire. Amen? And after that, what do we have? The what? The Roman Empire. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Then after the Roman Empire, then we will have another kingdom. It says that kingdom, there will be a mixture of iron and sand or clay. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If we look at the timeline of Daniel and trace it to the timeline of Jesus and to... John, when he wrote the book of Revelation, we will find out that, where do you think, during the time of Jesus, where do you think we are going to be on this, on this image? During the time of Jesus, when do you think it's going to be? Anybody? Sorry? Rome. Amen? So, during the time of Jesus... We know that the Romans crucified Jesus, isn't it? Obviously, we know that it was part of his purpose. But God used the Roman Empire to do that. Amen? So can you see, and, and that was when Jesus was alive. Amen? Then, in AD 95, after the death of Christ, the book of Revelation was written. Amen? So, we are way, 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 way past. We are way, way, way past the time that the Roman Empire actually ruled the world with iron fist. Because they crushed. Look at the way Daniel described that empire. Daniel, you see, you will notice that the rest of the empire, he just mentioned them. That one, that one. But when he mentioned the Roman Empire, it says they were, it, it, it talked so much about it. Let's, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's, let's go back to our Bibles. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Where are you? Okay. So, verses 33. It says, its leg of iron, its feet, no, 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 no. Okay, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. Okay, the head's fine, good, okay. Okay, hang on, just give me a second, I'll find it now. Sorry? Fourth, fourth. Okay. Forty. Okay. Yes. Okay, it says then 40, yes. And the fourth kingdom, you will notice all the ones before 40, he just mentioned them just very briefly. But on 40, it says, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, in as much as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. How many of us remember the Roman Empire? They were hard. Did you see how they crucified Jesus? It's people has, there's nobody has ever been tortured like that. The Roman invented that, such, that torture. They were there to crush any nation that came against that kingdom. They crushed. Hallelujah. So, the Roman Empire was significant to the prophecies that would happen in the last days. 
Hallelujah. So, let's look at some scriptures very quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reign. Just bear me a minute. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reign. There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reign. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reign. Okay. So, Scripture confirms that the fourth empire, the Roman Empire, has ruled over Israel, also ruled over Israel. We read about the reign of the Roman Empire, Augustus, about Judea. Amen. If we look at Luke chapter 2, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. We're not going to rush this. I want us to follow. I, I'm just taking us on a journey. Amen. Are we there? It says, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be what? Registered or taxed. Amen. So we see that. We also look at Luke chapter 3 and verses 1. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judah, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip tetrarch of Etoria, and the region of Trachonitis, and, oh God, my teeth is almost going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what it is. It's exactly what you pronounced it to be. <laughs> yeah. Also, we see also in the Gospels, it proves that Roman, that Rome's rule over the land of Israel. We see Luke chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. He says, is it lawful for, you, for us? This, Jesus actually is proving this to us now. That Roman, the Roman was the, the empire at the time. Amen. He says, is it lawful for us to pay tax to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, why do you test me? Show me a, di a dinerius whose image and inscription does it have? They answered and said, what? Caesar. Amen. So we know that during the time of Jesus and during the time of John the Divine, when he was exiled into the Isle of Patmos, we know that the Roman Empire was on power at the time. Amen. So let's go a little bit closer so we can see certain things that God also spoke. After this, God revealed something again to Daniel about the days that were coming. Amen? So let's open our Bibles to Daniel chapter 9. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 9. Amen? Are we there? Daniel chapter 9. So let's read verses 1 and 2 first. Hallelujah. Please put that image back. Thank you. In the first year of Darius, the son of what? Aesirius. 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 Sorry? Hi, are you serious? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It says, of the lineage of what? The what? The maids. So where is he on there? The second. So as at this time as well, 
when Daniel, when you will read further on this chapter, Daniel is about to pray a prayer now, and he's about to get an answer to his prayer. So if that empire is gone, the top one, so Daniel has found himself on another empire now, which is the second one that is with the silver arm. So he's also in that um, dispensation. I would, no, 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 not no special. I say it's in that time. Amen. So we've got Daniel here, and there was something that needed to happen that had been prophesied by a prophet Jeremiah about the rebuilding of the city of Jerusalem. Amen. Because Jerusalem was destroyed by. The previous empire. And that was how they took the people on exile. Daniel was one of them. But Daniel understood from the books that they were to suffer for 70 years. And after that 70 years, there has to be the rebuilding of Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. Because the city has to be built for God's prophecy to come to pass. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Daniel understood. So, let's read on. Let's read on. So, in the first year, verses 2 of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books, the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord. Can you hear that? Specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the dissolution of Jerusalem. Amen? Do you want to know where that was written in the Bible? Because it was also written somewhere in the Bible. You would find that in Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 11, and also you find that in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10. It says, and this whole land shall be desolate and astonishment, and this nation shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Can you see that? So it was prophesied. You see, this is where the word of God, don't joke with the word. When God speaks, it happens. Amen? And guess what? Is, we, do we have the word? We have the word. He says, I put my word in your mouth. That you might what? You might what? Pluck down and build again. So you can use the word to pluck down that which is not the will of God for your life and rebuild that which is the word of God for your life with the same word. Amen? So, in this situation, the children of, whenever the children of Israel are disobedient to God, guess what? The enemy comes in. And they take over that nation. And when they cry to God, God delivers them again. So Daniel was doing this. After that 70 years, amen. So let's go back to our book of Daniel. After that 70 years, the Bible says, In the first year of the, his reign, that is Darius, I, Daniel, understood by the books. That is saying that he understood through the word of God. You see, that's why we have to pray with the word of God. Daniel was praying with the word of God. He says, but Lord, I'm bringing my word back to you. You said that our nation will be free after 70 years. Why has it not happened now? So he was bringing back God's word to him. And God had to. Because he's faithful to his word. Amen. We can all learn from that. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, it says Jeremiah, um, uh, through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Then I set my face towards what? The Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. Did you know that? If nobody had got up to pray concerning what God has spoken, God wouldn't have done anything. Because God needs man. God needs man for him to do something on this world. It's not that he cannot, but he chooses that way. 
Man can do nothing without God, but God will do nothing without man. We give him permission when we pray. That's what our prayer does. Our prayer gives him, it, it makes him invade earth on our behalf. Why does he say we should ask? Do you think he doesn't know what you need before you ask? He does. But he wants you to ask him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, thanks. Um, just to confirm the point that you were making about um, the 70 years, if we look on Second Chronicles 36, from verse 20, I'll just read three verses. I'm reading from so Second Chronicles 36. 36. Yes, I'm at 20. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where there were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the day had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath, to fulfill three score and ten years. That's the seventy years. And in the now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all the kingdom, and put it also into writing, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdom of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people. The Lord is God, be with him, and let him go up. Amen. So just confirmation of the scriptures. Can you see the word? If we, if we go into the word, you will find everything is in there. You, you, don't, you don't come with private interpretation with the word of God. You always interpret the word of God with the word of God. Amen? So we see here. Okay, let's go back. Thank you, um, Brother Samuel. Amen. Hallelujah. So now we see that now it's 70 years was over. The suffering of the children of Israel. Now Daniel begins to pray. So let's move further to verses 20. Amen. Now, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord. Look, at Daniel was not a selfish person when he was praying. One of the things I want you to notice is that when he was including the sin of the nation, he didn't say, my people have sinned. He says, we have sinned. You know, some people say, eh, well, God, Jesus is coming soon. They're all going to perish. You're happy that people are perishing. I won't want to wish that for my worst enemy. We shouldn't wish that for our worst enemy. Because the judgment of God, my Lord... No man will be able to stand. It's fierce. That's why we have, to be, we have to go out and tell people about Jesus. A lot of people don't even know the urgency, how people need to be saved. But when you understand how close we are to the end time, then when you see people and God gives you the opportunity to minister to somebody about Jesus, you will take it like that. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go on. He says, yes, while I was speaking in my prayer, in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused, um, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. Amen? Now, let's look at what he says to him, verses 21. Now he says, he begins to give him another prophecy of something that must happen. 
It says here, 70 weeks are determined for your people. Now, we have to understand that this particular 70 weeks is talking about is talking about the Jewish nation. Amen? Because the people of Daniel were what? Were what? Who was he talking to? Please, somebody answer me. Who was he talking to? Hello? He was talking to Daniel. Angel Gabriel was talking to Daniel. Right? Look at him. Okay, let's go back to 23. Everybody's not, um, they're, they're, not, they're not sure. It says, at the beginning of your supplication, so who was praying? Daniel. The command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. It says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. So, what city is he talking about? Jerusalem. This is not, you know, some people can say, oh, this Jerusalem is talking about, it's not something like, oh, you know, some of us, we, 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 there's, 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 there are some interpretations, like when the Bible says, go, it says, um, go, go into the world and preach the gospel, amen? Some people will say, oh, my house is my Jerusalem. But this one is literal Jerusalem. Amen? This is literal Jerusalem. And I'll tell you why it's literal. Amen? Because, first of all, before Christ comes, the Bible says his people will go back to his nation, to the nation of Israel, and they will all come back together. And around that time is when the Messiah will come. So this was an answer to the beginning of that to happen. Because Jerusalem has been destroyed. But it needed to be restored. For God's prophecy to begin to come to pass. Brother Chris, if I'm wrong, please just point me out. Yeah? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So it says here, where are we? I think I've mistakenly moved my... So yes, it says 24. It says 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression. Because you see, do you know that Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem. But if the children of Israel had not come back, that wouldn't have happened. So that prophecy has to come. The nation of Israel has to come to where they are. Then Mary would come and the Messiah would come through that nation. Amen? But this time, there's no nation at all. Because it had been ruined to the ground. And it needed to be rebuilt. That's why we had Nehemiah. And we had Ezra. The book of Ezra. He began to tell us the story how they all went back and built the temple and built the city again. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, he says to make an end. So, here, look at these 70 weeks. 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression. To make an end of sin. How, who brought an end to sin? Jesus, Exactly. So be, this was before Jesus actually came. It says, and to make what? Reconciliation for what? Iniquity. To bring an everlasting what? Righteousness. Who brought this? Who brought everlasting righteousness? It says, for God who made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. So Christ brought eternal Righteousness, everlasting righteousness. To seal up the visions and prophecy, amen, and to anoint the most holy. So every prophecy that we have, it, it's going to be sealed after these 70 weeks. Amen? But if we look at these 70 weeks as literal as 70 weeks, what he has spoken here wouldn't have come to pass. But what he, what 70 weeks meant there was 70 times 70 years. Amen? A week meant seven years. One week meant a year. So if you look at it, one week meant a year. And he's saying that, now let us see the division of these weeks. He says, Know therefore and understand 
that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince is prophesying now about Jesus coming. It says there shall be what? 70 weeks and 62, sorry, there shall be 70, there shall be 7 weeks, amen? So, so this is what he's saying. He says to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there's going to be seven weeks and 62 weeks, which makes it 69 weeks. So it says that from this time that I've had this, that I'm giving you this interpretation, there's going to be 69 weeks until the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, from calculation, we know that 69 weeks has happened because Jesus Christ had come. Amen? So we are left with how many weeks? Out of 70 weeks. We're left with what? So we're left with one week. Amen? I'm going to explain the one week in a minute. So, right from that time when Daniel received prophecy till the day of triumphant entry, that was when the whole 69 weeks ended. You know the day when Jesus Christ entered into Jerusalem on the donkey and when they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna? From biblical scholars, they said that was completed on the day Jesus entered into Jerusalem. Amen? So, we've got one week. Jesus has come. He's died. Then, Jesus dies. And after 95 years, A.D., John writes the book of Revelation. But what was not in that prophecy was the building of the church. Amen? That prophecy concerned only the nation of Israel. But when Jesus was alive, in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 18, he says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, there's an interval between the 69 and the fulfillment of the 70. That interval is the time of the church. Amen? Because Jesus Christ says, I will build my church. You will notice the children of Israel, they were asking Jesus. They were saying, when are you going to restore the kingdom? Jesus began to tell them that. He says, it's not given to you to know, but the Father knows. Right? He also said, Everything he told them, he was telling them, he was giving them what was going to happen after the rapture. You see, the rapture is not in this year, in this prophecy. This prophecy was concerning the nation of Israel. Amen? During it, also the time of the Gentile, we call it the time of the Gentile. Which means when the nation, the other nation will oppress the nation of Israel. We'll see even to you today that there are nations oppressing Israel today. And they are the Gentile nation. But as soon as the rapture happens, guess how many years is going to be left after the rapture? Anybody? How many years? Sorry? What? Seven. So, does that make one week? There you go. So that's the interval we have. So we have the interval is the time of the church for the Gentiles to be saved. Amen. Then after the rapture, we start counting again. The rest of that 70 weeks. And the Bible says the Antichrist, the first three and a half years, everybody will be all right. The last three and a half years, 
the Antichrist will show himself. So we know that that last 70, that seven weeks is the time of the great tribulation. Hallelujah. So we are in between 69 and the last week. That's why we know the rapture can happen anytime. Amen? So, as at the time John was writing the book of Revelation, amen? We know that that 69 weeks is gone. So, for many of you that will say, well, yeah, Jesus is not going to come yet, you know. Ah, there's still more time. The time is not, we don't have any more time. There is an interval. And that interval is because Jesus made a comment. He made a prophecy about the church. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The nation, the Gentile nation, will have the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be born again. Then after the time of the Gentiles, then, where's my Bible? Okay. Okay. So let's go back to our Bibles. So look at what it says here. Okay. So we said to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there shall be until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. Please, if you don't understand, you can ask me a question. Please don't be quiet. It says, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in what? Troublesome times. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. Amen? So when did Messiah get cut off? Do we know that Jesus Christ was crucified and he what? Rose again. It says, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end of it shall be with a flood until the end of war desolation are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Hallelujah. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to what? So who do you think he's talking about here? Hello? Okay. Let's go again. Verses 26. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. But not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city. Who is he talking about? Who is this prince he's talking about? Sorry? Sorry? Antichrist. The, 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 this prince of this people of the prince is talking about, they won't come and destroy the city of Jerusalem if it is Jesus' his people. He's talking about a different prince. The Antichrist. Guess how long they're going to do that for? The Bible gives us the answer to it. It says what? Where are we? It says, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the prince, there shall be seven weeks and what? 62 weeks. Notice he mentioned seven were first. Then he mentioned what? 62. Amen? Then he now says, the street shall be built again and the wall, even in the troublesome times. Then he says, after the 62. So he's talking about 62. After the seven has been fulfilled. Notice seven weeks comes first. Then 62. Then we're left with one week. So it says after the 62, what's going to happen? The Messiah shall be cut off. 
When was Messiah cut off? Messiah was cut off before Revelation was written. Amen? Then, look at what he now says here. He says, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. He says, and after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. He says, the end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war, desolation are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant. This prince will confirm a covenant with many for what? One week. That one week is that the 70th week. Amen? Which is seven years. Amen? He says, but in the middle of the week, three and a half years of, 70 years, of seven years, Amen? Oh, Jesus, help me here. Where am I? So, in the middle of that week, it shall what? Bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abomination shall he shall be one who makes desolation even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. So this Antichrist, the Antichrist will basically stop the sacrifice, the Jewish sacrifice, and he will make that temple that they, because the Jewish people will still believe in their Judaism, and he would desecrate it, and he would eventually call himself God in that same temple. And that's the desolation Daniel was talking about. Amen? But we're going to, well, as we go travel through the book of Revelation, we're going to see what, a lot of things that will happen. Amen? But I just wanted to know, I want us to understand the timeline that we're in. We are closer to the end than you can think about. Amen? That's just why I just wanted us to. So, the time that we're in is so close because that foot the feet mixed with clay and iron, we already have them. The ten kings, their nations, we already have them in our present day. They only need to be given the power. That's all they're waiting for. Once they are given the power, you know, by then I don't think the church will still be, the church will still be here. We would have phew, caught up with Christ in the air and gone. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So now let's go back to the book of Revelation. Amen? Hallelujah. Do we understand it? Have I, please, if you don't understand, let me just have, take a break, actually. Any question? Any question? Any question? No question? Is somebody raising up their hands? Yes. Yes? Okay. Just had a question uh, for myself uh, for the feet, which is uh, iron uh, mixed with clay. Mm. Something mentioned about I don't know this sh uh, something about intermingling with men. Yes. Who who are those people intermingling with men? So that means they are not men. They're intermingling with men, clay and iron. Okay. Let's go back to the. Scripture, Daniel chapter 2.
verse uh, 43. Verse 43. So, as you saw, I am mixed with ceramic clay. They will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a very hard one. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I may have to come back to answer that question, maybe next week. Amen. But thank you for answering that question. I will go, go study it and come back and look, that, look at that. Thank you. Is that okay? So please remind me. I won't forget. I would, I would go and look at it. Um, and I will come back to you on that one. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Any other question? Yeah? But let me read something that. Oh, sorry, are you somebody about to ask a question? Oh, no. Sorry? Okay, yes, yes, go on. Hold on one second. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the sound is not coming through the speakers. Um, yeah. But uh, we can, I can hear you, Brother Arnold, and I'll relay your question to Pastor Gabriel. So, Brother Arnold is yeah. saying uh, the picture, whether the picture uh, relates to the rapture. Is that correct, Brother Arnold? Yeah. If you look at the picture, okay. Is it finished? Uh, yes, he's finished. He's asking uh, how the picture relates, uh, the rapture, relate, re the rapture relates to the timeline on the picture. Okay. So, if you look at the interpretation of the dream, you will notice that the timeline of the rapture was not mentioned in the dream, but we know that it's there. And how do we know that it's there? Because in the second dream that, I mean, the, when the angel came to Daniel and began to speak to Daniel in John, John Daniel chapter 9, we will notice that he was talking about a prince that will come. And that prince that will come would be at the, the feet of iron and clay. But you will notice that chapter 2 of that dream, when he, he only interpreted the dream to the feet of iron and clay. He doesn't say anything else, but he just talks about that. But we know that before the great tribulation, the rapture would happen. Because the church is not going to be in the great tribulation. God has proven himself times and times way, way, way before, that the righteous does not suffer with the wicked. During the time of the rapture is God's judgment. It's the beginning, sorry, it's the beginning of God's judgment. Hallelujah. For those who rejected his son, it's the beginning of it. The reason why I say the beginning of it is because if it was the end of it, nobody would be saved. But there are still people that will be saved in the great tribulation. Hallelujah. So it will be the beginning of the judgment to give some people the chance to also turn to him. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So this image doesn't relate anything to the rapture. It just shows us the different empires before the rapture. Does that answer the question? 
Yes, he is giving a thumbs up. Amen. Any other question? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just um, rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. We'll close now. Let's rise up on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. We will continue next week from the book of Revelation. So we're going to go back to Revelation chapter 1 and we we'll start to read and we'll begin to read Revelation. I just showed us the timeline tonight. We are close. Very close. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother James, come and um, close us off in prayer, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Lord, for your word, which is spirit and which is life. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing to us the mysteries of the word through Pastor Gabriel. Even as we go home, Holy Spirit, we ask that you shall continue revealing even more to us so that we shall receive everything that God has put in his word because man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that has proceeded from the mouth of God. So as we go home, Holy Spirit, minister to us even more on what we have received, but also show us how to not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers. Show us practical actions we can take in the light of what we have had today, Almighty God, to speak to people around us with urgency, to preach the gospel with urgency, because Lord Jesus Christ, you are coming soon. Thank you, Lord. As we go home, we ask that you shall give everyone a safe journey back home and that you shall give us all sweet sleep, for you give your beloved sweet sleep. All these things we pray, giving you all the glory, Lord Jesus, all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. I am the head and not the tail. I am armed and dangerous, unstoppable and unmovable with the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against me or my family shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me or my family in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Shalom. Thank you very much. I don't know whether Pastor Desiree has something to say. Oh. Okay, Brother Arnold, um, and uh, who else is with us on there? Shami, uh, next Monday we don't have Bible study, but we're going to be meeting up in here to pray. So you're welcome to join us. Have a good evening, because we have a conference on that uh, weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we'll be praying for that. All right? Thank you very much, and have a good night. Thank you, Pastor Gabriel. God bless you.